Hey everybody, this is Mike. Welcome back to the Z Motorsports shop and channel. Um, I'd like to thank all my new subscribers. We've got, had quite a few actually here in the last four or five weeks. Um, about 100, 105, something like that. So thank you very much. Um, and if you're not a subscriber and this is your first time visiting the channel or just clicked on the video, um, if you're interested in RVs, specifically uh, diesel coaches, jeeping or off-roading in general and modifications, and just any, any other gearhead related uh, shop projects, whether they be mechanical or machine or fabrication, go ahead and click that subscribe button because this channel is going to be for you. So that being said, um, today's project is going to be another axle related fixture. Um, for those of you that remember two years ago in one of my er earlier videos, I did an axle fixture that uh, cradled an axle, uh, this, this, uh, basically it's an ex uh, accessory to my engine, my engine stand. So it bolts onto the engine stand so it cradles the axle. And I've used it quite a bit over the last couple of years. It works really good for holding, holding the axle fairly solid um, while cutting brackets and so forth off and grinding. We even re-clocked my son's knuckles from his WJ project. Um, we've done, we've, we've used that quite a bit. I've used it on a couple other axles where I've built, built them, built the axles, the uh, gears and everything. But the one thing that I, I guess I was hoping for a little more was a little more rigidity out of it. Being where it's mobile and um, only as, as stable as the engine, uh, the engine stand, and it's a geared, it's a geared head engine stand, so it does, crank and, and, and you know, I, can, I can level it up pretty good but it has that slop side to side in the gears of the uh, worm in, in the worm gear in the head so it's not it's not as rigid or as accurate as I would like it now for what I've been using it for it's been okay I would have liked to have had something a little more rigid when we were reclocking my son's knuckles and then I was doing another um, a 2009 Rubicon JK where I was, I cut the brackets and everything off and was redoing the brackets to count for uh, some caster changes and a few things. It would have been nice to have it a little more rigid there. So I decided to go ahead and try to build something that's more rigid and more fixed to like my fabrication table. So if you, if you remember also back in uh, shop, Saturday morning shop projects five and six, I showed one where I built that attaches to my transmission jack so I can raise and lower axles in and out of vehicles, fine tune them on height when I'm trying to put the control arms back together. And, and it works really well. I've used it on mine when I pulled mine out to redo my, uh, to take my ACOS and everything off. That was my, kind of my test run. It worked really good for that. So that does what it was intended to do. The axle fixture for the engine stand doesn't quite do what I expected it to do. Or let me rephrase that. Doesn't quite do what I wanted it to do. Um, it works good. Again, I'm gonna hold on to it because it works great for the grimy work. So I can pull the axle apart, stick it on that axle or that engine stand adapter, wheel it over by the side of the shop, get the plasma cutter out, cut brackets off, grind, all that kind of stuff, keep the mess over there out of the way. Works great for that. But I want something that's gonna be a little more rigid that I can bolt down to my fabrication table, that I can set the axle in, bolt, it, clamp it, and have it hold it rigid for either clocking knuckles or what I've seen to be doing quite a bit here lately is bracketry, taking the cut and the kind of a, the, the thin stamped steel off of the, the factory axles, axles and adding on, you know, 3 16 to quarter inch bracketry. Um, it's gonna be nice to be able to set that axle Get, get a, a degree reading off of it with a protractor and then be able to put my, my brackets on there, measure them and know I'm in direct relation to where I had that axle clamped. So that's what today's project is gonna be. So follow along. Um, this is gonna be kind of a low budget, if you will. I just dug through my, my, uh, my metal rack and found some pieces. What I would like to have found, I've got a piece of four inch by one inch thick mild steel here. What I would have liked to have done is found another piece like that. Um, I priced it out, it was like a hundred and some odd bucks for it. And it's like, yeah, I really don't, I'll, I'll use that for the top cap. But for the, what I'm, ba what I'm basically gonna do is I'm gonna make two V's, a bottom and a top, 
basically times two. So then I can drill and tap my, tap my table where I need to bolt it. Come in here, boom, boom, drop a couple of half inch bolts in there and bolt it there. And, um, it, it, and it should hold it fairly rigid. So for the bottom, I'm using some one by two um, tubing and it's fairly thick wall. I think this is 330 seconds thick. I think this is 188 wall. Anyway, what I did is I cut, I was going to actually just take a length of it and just V it out and then lay a piece in there. But I got thinking that I want to go the full depth, that two inch. So what I did is I cut four pieces on 45s that are six inches long. And then I'll take a couple of pieces of strap. I just have to trim these yet. Lay them in there, weld them in there so that's flat. Then I'll butt two of these together like so, weld them in the middle, but I will actually weld them. I will actually weld them to a couple of these um, pieces of tubing like so. So weld them here and here, so that'll be my V. And then I will weld a couple of vertical pieces coming up the sides like so, and make some slugs out of some, some steel here that'll slide down in there, drill and tap that to half 13, and then I've got some long bolts and some flange nuts, kind of like you'd use on a, a milling table setup. And then on this top plate, I will cut out two inch drop out of it so it mirrors this and drill down through it. Um, these here are going to end up being about eight inches apart. Or excuse me, they'll end up being about 12 inches apart. And I think I'll probably trim them down a little bit more yet too. So they don't, need, they don't need to be quite that wide. They don't need to be anywhere near that wide. They could probably be eight inches and be more than adequate. So I will cut those down. This one could probably be about eight inches. Yeah, eight inches would be more than adequate. And then cut a two inch notch out of it, drill holes so that they will, this piece will slide over those studs and then tighten it down and clamp the axle down. So that's pretty much what we're gonna do here today. And uh, that ought to be, like I said, that ought to be more than adequate as far as strength goes. So I think first order of business, I think first order of business is to make some some little caps and come in here and cap off. So I need to make four of these and come in and cap these off and then cut these to the proper length and um, get them welded. So let's go ahead and get started on that. I've already cut the, the 45 on these. I had a couple short pieces. I already cut the 45 on them. So then I'll just come in and cut the other angle or the other length at 90. So let's go ahead and do that next. All right. So. I've got all the ends there capped, and I just kind of went over and breathed over them with the disc sander, or the, excuse me, the belt sander, and just knocked that edge down. I've got these, these are six inches long. They're solid one inch. So I've got them marked in the center. Now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and square those up, and probably leave them separated just a slight little bit there to allow me to fill up with weld. And then once I get that, once I get these welded on, I'll come in and trim them to six inches. And then that will allow me to put a vertical up each side, which will basically measure that outside, outside eight inches. And then on the top pieces will be eight inches. So that should pretty much take care of that. So I'm going to go ahead and get these clamped and tacked and welded. Okay, so I've got the lower V's welded together. So I got the one inch solid, one by three. Now I'll come in after these cool and just kind of cut these off and square those up at six inches. And then I'll be able to um, machine that the blocks block. where I'll probably just drill a couple of holes down inside, drill and tap this to want to uh, half 13, press it down inside, plug weld it as well as probably put okay. a perimeter weld. So Drop a couple parallels in there. <clears throat> OK. 
Okay. Grab uh, maybe a half inch end mill. I'll probably do a three quarter, make that in one cut, but I'll do like a half inch end mill and make it in a couple of cuts. I got a nice five eighths one there. Maybe I'll use the five eighths. Check to leave out my RPM. So we'll go ahead and. I think I'll take an eighth inch off of this side, flip it over and do an eighth inch. So come down to where I just touch. Or actually I'm raising the knee up, not the quill down. I got the quill down, locked down against my... Okay, just touch, so I'll zero out my knee. And I'll come up maybe 40 thousandths or so, see what that looks like. Turn on my power feed, haven't used that in a while. I'm going to go ahead and face off each end here. Then when it comes time to cut it, I can measure in, boom, I'll cut two of them then face that off, then come in and cut the other ones, and that way um, I'm always cutting from a clean uh, machined edge. So there's each end machined and one surface. Now I'll turn it over. Make sure you don't have any metal shavings sitting on your parallels, because that'll definitely throw everything off. Okay. Tap it down while you're tightening your handle down. That way you make sure that the uh, vise is actually pulling the work down in rather than uh, letting it float. You can always tell because if your parallels are tight. Now, while that's cutting, um, electro weld square tubing, well, even round tubing, electro weld tubing has this raised seam in here. There's a couple different ways I've usually gone about this in the past. Sometimes depending on how long of a piece I need to press in, I will actually kind of measure off the one of the walls how far it is, and it's usually just uh, you know a thin one. So I'll take like a an eighth inch end mill and just run down that. That way the piece will slide in. Where I'm only talking, you know, an inch and a quarter, inch and a half, I'll probably just reach in there with a chisel and drive that off, or if a file or whatever. But I'll, I'll just knock the the seam off the tubing rather than cut a uh, clearance groove in the uh, insert. There's, as I say, different ways of going about it. Six one, half a dozen of the other. All right, so I have all of my little blocks cut and uh, chamfered off. I made them all inch and a quarter. Well, I did a few thousand inch, inch and a quarter anyway. The length wasn't exactly critical. Um, and then I went ahead and put a 45 chamfer on each one. So it's, when it's pressed down flush, I can lay a TIG bead in around the perimeter which will bring it up flush. And then right now I'm getting ready to drill um, some 3 8 inch holes in all four of these tubes. And I'm just gonna do it on um, two surfaces. So I'll just drill straight through. So it's one inch square tube, eighth wall. So I'll probably come in half an inch on each side and down, probably split the difference. This is one and a quarter inches long. So I'll probably come down around 5 8 or seven inch or so. So next up, I'm gonna drill and tap my, uh, my four blocks. So I put my work stop here so I can put the blocks in once I find my center of each block because they're all the same size. I cut them all from the same stock. And I've also gone, because I'm so far off the one side of center of my uh, Kurt vise here, I went ahead and put a one on the other side so I don't side load the vise. So I've got both of those in there. It's random wherever the other one goes, but I've got this one up against my work stop. So I'm gonna come in here and find the center in both X and Y. I will go ahead and do the same thing to the other three. And uh, be ready to weld these in. All right, cutting the vertical pieces to uh, length here. 
So thought I'd show off my uh, Bailey bandsaw here real quick. Love this saw. It's actually been a really good saw for an import machine. Um, the mitering head, it's been a really good saw. So I've been very happy with it. So I got the stop work stop set up here so I can du duplicate the cuts. Got one cut. Just shut off. There's the. Load in another one. Lock the cam lock down. Start it. Let the. Take the cylinder pressure off and let her run. All right, I think I've got all my components pretty much um, ready to go here. I've got all four of the blocks uh, machined, threaded, ready to press in. I've got the vertical tubes cut. Um, put a slight chamfer in here. I removed the electro weld seam and knocked the mill scale off where the rosette welds will be. And then I cut them all to length and the other end has been prepped. What I will do though is once I get these pressed in and welded, I will take a final measurement and if I need to tune any of them up, I can touch off and tune them up from this end on the disc sander and then start clamping things together, get everything tacked and welded that on the, for the vertical. So um, I think we're going to head over to the uh, hydraulic press and press these slugs into the end of the I tubes. went ahead and give these a wipe down with some acetone before I uh, come over here. So let's go ahead and it's pressing right down in, going past the window. So I've got a nice interference fit here. Perfect. So press down in so it's flush and it leaves a nice trough to lay a weld down in and then a rosette weld on the other side. So I'll go ahead and press the other three in and go back over to the fabrication okay, table and to weld. So they're all pressed in. We are going to give them one last little wipe here with acetone on the welding surfaces. You want to go into the center first, get it molten, and then wash it into the walls when you're doing a rosette weld like this. Wash it to the walls from the center, otherwise you won't get good fusion. And then just go ahead and fill up the center. And back off. So now I got my handy dandy little steady rest out here so I can get my arm up a little bit. So I've got the uh, um, vertical pieces all welded to the lower blocks. I'm just letting those cool real quick. <coughs> um, I've cut my lower plates. Now, more than likely, I'll probably take a C-clamp and clamp these to the table. But if in the event that I decide to drill and tap my table down the road to make it a little more rigid, I figured I might as well go ahead and drill the holes prior to, um, prior to welding it all together. So All right, so here are the bot, the two bases completed. Let's see if I can zoom in a couple of the welds here. So this is pretty much how they'll sit. Spacing's not exact, but close. 
So I'll be able to reach in with C-clamps and clamp them down. Or like I said, I do have the 3 8 inch holes in there if I decide to bolt them. Um, I'll probably put them on this side of the t my fabrication table. This side's got a little more over and overhang. This is where I usually scoot up under to TIG weld. And this is the most heavily used quadrant of this table. So I'll probably mount these over on the other side where I drill my holes so I don't have them, the holes over here on this side. But um, the bottoms are done. I'm going to go ahead and probably slap a little bit of uh, some paint on them. And then, then I'll move on to the top section, which I need to cut a V out and drill the holes down through for the all thread. So, yeah, let's see if that shows up. Hope that shows up on camera. That's a very nice surface finish there. <clears throat> Both of these are cut to length. So I have the top plate standing up in my mill vise. I've got my stop set. It's up against the stop. I've centered myself zero to zero, or uh, on the y-axis here, I've centered it over the work by coming in with the edge finder and then hitting the center. So I'm going to come in now and find the edge. I'm going to pick up this edge, offset half the thickness of the uh, edge finder. That'll be my edge. And then based on my measurements here, I need to come in for the first hole. I'll come in 497 and a half thousandths. That's where my first hole will be. I'll zero my X. And then once that hole's drilled, I'll move over six inches, 930 thousandths, sink my other hole, which should therefore also be um, 497 and a half thousandths off of this other okay, side. Okay, I moved over my 497 and a half thou. So I'm going to come down right now. And I'm actually going to zero that. And I'm going to come in and spot it. Then I'm going to go ahead and move over my 600, or excuse me, 6 inches, 930 thousandths. All right. Well, sorry about that. I don't know what happened, why the camera shut off somewhere while progressing through the drilling of the holes. But anyway, I got the uh, all four holes drilled in these two plates. I ended up progressively stepping up. Um, and I, originally, I got to half inch because I'm using half inch all thread. And it fit. It fit good, but it was a little snug going up and down. So I took it out to 1730 seconds instead. Give me just a little bit of uh, leeway. And now they seem to be working perfectly. And I'll use uh, some flange nuts on it. So next item up is I'm going to go ahead and cut in the uh, V mirrored image of the bottom into the top. So there's a couple different ways you can do this, I guess. You could put it up on a rotary table, find the uh, the merging the the uh, emerging points there, and turn it 90 degrees and cut them. You could cut it on a bandsaw and then just clean it up on a with a sander and call it good. Um, however, I've already got a mess all over my mill, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up on some one two three blocks to get it up off the, t on the table. I'll remove my vise first, set it up on some one two three blocks, set it at 45 degrees, and then I can use my X and Y axis to uh, cut the, the V-notch in there. Now you could also set it up in the drill, ch or in the uh, vise, and put it on 45, and come in here and cut it. But I don't, that's a, that's a pretty good stick out, and I'm afraid I'm gonna get some deflection on the end mill. So I think I'm just going to set this up 45 degrees on the table, and use my X and Y axis to cut the two uh, to cut the two sections. So I'll probably come in, come off of it, I don't know, fifty thousandths or so, plunge cut along, cut that piece out, and then come in and clean up the edges. So I'm going to go ahead and get the 
the vise and everything off the mill and work on getting this set up on the So here's the mill. kind of a down and dirty way of setting this up. I got it up on some one, two, three blocks, plenty of clearance for where I'm gonna cut. I've got it clamped, I've just got it snug down. So then I've taken, I know this is 45 degrees, so I've got my brown and sharp um, combination square up here. And then I'm just going to traverse across this. And that's pretty much spot on right there. So I know that this line is in, is parallel with my X axis. So I'll lock everything down here so everything's rigid. Um, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use a 3 8 inch uh, end mill on this, but I wanna, what I first wanted to do is I wanna come in and drill a hole. So what I did, is before I got too carried away with that, um, I center punched a hole here and I'll find center with my wiggler. So I'll put my wiggler in and find my holes. Now what I did is, like I said, three eighths. So that's gonna be the bottom of it. And I want a nice radius at the bottom. So the uh, half of three eighths, which is the radius, is three sixteenths, so 187 and a half thousandths. So I come off of that. Basically, I know the center line of this is two inches. I subtracted 187 and a half thousandths off of that. Come in there, scribed it, center punched it. This is where I'm gonna drill my three eighths inch hole. I'll use that as my zero, zero and then I'll come off the x-axis a little bit, cut in my y, and then I'll come off my y-axis a little bit, cut in my x, and then I'll fine-tune that with an end mill. So, grab some glasses here, and let's uh, come in and find that uh, Get the wiggler to quit wiggling. Oop, a little too far. Okay. And that's pretty much right over my, that's right over my, uh, so now I'm going to zero out my X and Y. Spot drill. Come in here with a quarter inch. with my three eighths. Now I'll make a nice radius for the bottom of that. So I had a half inch um, roughing end mill. I didn't have a three eighths roughing. So what I'm doing is I backed it off from my zero from my zero zero point, I backed it off um, oh, about 125 thousandths, which will allow me to come in here and rough cut these now. And then I'll put the three eighths end mill in. See, I'm just barely off of that line now. Then I'll come in with. Uh, the three eighths end mill and go to spec. So, won't bore you with the 
the details of this. So I'll uh, come back once I get this roughed okay, out. So I kind of had to. Okay, so I kind of had to adjust on the fly here because I don't have a 3 8 end mill that is one inch in length to make sure and reach the uh, full depth of this block. So I had to adjust off half the radius with a half inch, same one I used to clean up the ends. So then I'll just come in and I'll stop where my Y comes in to the radius at 61 and a half thousandths. And then come on out with this one and that should give me my nice clean radius, albeit it'll be a half inch radius instead of the 3 eighths. All right, well, that pretty much concludes my uh, axle fixture. Um, I've got it kind of spaced kind of pretty much how I think it will be, give or take probably a, a, an inch or two here on the, fab on the fabrication table. And I will put it on that side, because um, like I said, this quadrant over here is where I do most of my welding and fabricating. So on that side, um, I, if I drill a couple holes to mount it, no big deal. But anyway, you can kind of see the range it'll work. This is pretty much indicative of what a, a Dana 70 or an 80 or maybe even a, a, an a, AAM uh, axle will be. And I still have plenty of thread and plenty of contact area to lock it down and hold it. And the one over here is three inches, so plus or minus um, uh, like a Dana 44, Dana 30 Jeep axles. So those are, this is going to be pretty much indicative. You can see the range. I should have all my bases covered. Um, this is three inch on one side and two and three quarter on the other. And I'm not making contact yet between the upper and lower halves. I still have at least three eighths of an inch there. Yeah, exactly three eighths of an inch there with it clamped down on two and three quarter um, and so I think that's going to be uh, more than adequate and I think it'll be very solid. So uh, I think this is going to work out well. Um, the machining turned out pretty decent. Uh, I just went through the file, fine tooth file and broke all my edges. So I think I'm pretty happy with that. I think that'll work out well and I think it'll provide a lot of years of service. So um, I appreciate you taking the time to watch and if you like what you see, Give me a thumbs up and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments, I welcome them. Like I said, I haven't seen too many. I, I did a lot of research and everything before. I couldn't really see a lot of stuff on axle fixtures. There was a lot of um, makeshift ones for like one time use and so forth, but I wanted something that was a little more repetitive. So uh, I hope you found this interesting. And again, thank you for watching.